So it's an eight o'clock uh, public service announcement. Um, bringing the people's attention to key issues that we dealing with on the land. So I got a call. I'm gonna give people a chance to get in before I uh, start to go in. So I've been on hiatus because Big Mama and the elders told me to sit down and allow for each one of the tribal members that's doing specific work, the opportunity to get caught up because we was too far ahead and it was causing a, um, a rift in the uh, up and coming um, chiefs that's developing. So the elder chiefs had to get out the way. So that's where I've been getting out the way to let the younger chiefs put in their work and um, continue waking our people up to the fact that uh, they tried to lie to us about our identity, but we know who we are. And um, a lot of the youth is just now catching up and they learn better from people closer to their age bracket. So the ones who've been getting the information, making their little TikTok videos and doing a uh, Instagram shorts and YouTube shorts, um, delivering key bites of information, this they turn to make the unified front in order for us to push the invaders back to the point where everything spills over into the open. Because the whole goal is to use the reparations distraction, to use the terminologies of exonyms that describe who we are, to divide the people up from the land, and they rely heavily on a collection of isms. That's racism, Christism, Mohammedism, um, spookism, and all those other dogmatic, misleading, um, divide and conquer tactics implemented, but we not gonna fall for it. It's gonna be a lot of people not gonna be here because when this grid finish shifting, if the mitochondrial doesn't sink, and a lot of them you seeing it as a sudden adult death, a sudden adult death syndrome, and a lot of it is being attributed to the jab. <clears throat> now, all this is being played out as a stage show, so. Haiti got sidetracked because um, they cheated. But that's another story. The, the fix was in to try to prevent Haiti from having a cause for celebration. It don't matter. They still going to have a celebration for something. It's going to be some excuse is going to come up. So the message that came with that is that there was a Okay, so the symbolism of the World Cup is the cup of the sacrifice of the saints. Haiti is last. So before we get, we, when it start to roll out, Haiti got to be first. So whatever obstacle was ran into, they cheated them out the World Cup, meaning that they made a move again to try to usurp us by derailing um, a chain of events that shows them who we are. Had they not cheated, it would have been unmistakable to the people that we know what we're talking about. So when the fix was in, they changed the books to rewrite the script to throw the youth off the trail of where the elders told them to look. So... um. They still going to find a reason. I had talked to the sister, Bayeno Bello, and she was telling me the problem in Haiti right now 
is that the wealthy is hoarders and the poor are the generous. So the rift comes in is when we shut this shit down, if the wealthy don't want to share the resources with the uh, paupers, then the paupers are going to be forced by the laws of nature to go get that shit and pass it out. The civil war is what it looks like, but it's not civil war. It's the same as when the police come and get your car when the airs break down to continue a pursuit. It's called commandeering the resources. First, they gonna try to give those in Haiti in the upper middle class with the resources the opportunity to take care of a family or several families on the resources rather than hoard them. Because hoarding them is gonna make the people automatically this the, when the psyche flip, right? If you hoarding, you vibrating at a frequency that's going to attract the wrath of the righteous. You, you, there's nothing you can do about it because the mitochondrial shift is going to make the people join forces to cleanse the land. And you're going to see it the more they try to offset the um, chain of events, the more it causes the energy to be backed up in certain areas. The energy needs to flow, Right? So, um, from Haiti and Sister Baino Bello, um, we was, since our conversation, I have received a call from, um, Chief Warhorse and, um, one of the other elder chiefs from further out west. <clears throat> and they wanted me to tell y'all the influencers that the establishment is using that haven't seen her receipts need to come see the receipts with their own eyes. The reason being is we can continue to follow the divide and conquer narrative and the ignorance of not knowing who we is. Or the other alternative is that we can unify by clearing up the misconceptions by presenting these people, key people, with the receipts to show them how they try to usurp us, undermine us, in order to steal the land. But because we have a blood tied to the land that they trying to disassociate us from with the miseducation of the Negro. Carter G. Woodson, um, uh, understanding of training the Negro to stay in the Negro's place. But <clears throat> this is a Dale Jones war correspondence, Mumia, um, uh, a Mumia radio announcement from the pits of the war. So right now, we need to try to persuade Roland Martin, who's been pushing this African-American thing, to go to Chief Warhorse for the receipts. <clears throat> because this is in the public domain now, this is the side effect. Because I told y'all, if Chief Warhorse called for him and they don't show up, it's going to be consequences. You think that this damn devil was canceling people? You're going to either work with the tribes <clears throat> on the land, from the land, or you're not going to be able to do business anywhere under any conditions anywhere on the land. <clears throat> the, uh, um, Pre presenting to them the receipts that proves who we are and shows where all of the dirt was done at. See, Chief Warhorse have these receipts. And she said that a guy like Roland Martin apparently haven't seen the receipts 
It's a couple more of them <clears throat> that need to go see her and look at the usurp um, invasion that we up against that we are actually clearing off the land. But the ones who are in a um, position of influence over the people from the land, because some of the people haven't heard Chief Warhorse. Like Roland Martin, uh, apparently he's a Mason, probably P Prince Hall. Um, he appears to be pretty high ranked, probably, you know, Master Mason. So if he understand who Hiram is and that Hiram is raised, he'd get his dad's down there, see Chief Warhorse. But we have to make him aware that he got a responsibility to his constituents to go look at the receipts with his own eyes. And he can tell y'all about them on, talk, on cooking with the chief, right? The reason why she asked me to do it is because the people that understand what I be saying and know what's going on and know that this is a power shift will make sure he get the message. <laughs> And um, some of her people doing the same thing. Something going on. It's Ice Cube. So um, I'm going to go to Ice Cube in a few minutes. <clears throat> so right now, Roland Martin, the African-American, um, the... Uh, unapologetically African Umar Johnson apparently he don't know who he is need to go talk to Chief Warhorse so I do respect you gotta respect the elders of the land or you won't do business on the land this is the rule she giving them an opportunity she's welcoming them to come look at the receipts Go look at the laws, <clears throat> the bills presented, all of these things she was instrumental in the struggle under the civil rights to make sure that when they tried this move to take us from being the organic tribe, she can tell them she been fighting the whole time knowing who she was. That's why she had to come from the angle she came from. She got all the receipts. So we want the foundational black Americans to wreak the to come and explain to her who the fuck is a foundational black American. Because if you don't know who the black is that was declared dead at sea, then you don't know who we is civilly mortis but we five fifth realized now <clears throat> god body god mind walking around in man form <clears throat> that's what we doing so when the people make it known if you want to continue to do business in this place that they currently call in america you need to go talk to the elders to make sure you understand whether you being deceived or not. <clears throat> we don't have a problem per se with the people of Africa and they don't got no problem with us. But the media divide and conquer machine want us to profess to be from somewhere other than we from in order to pretend like they don't have to give us our shit back. That's not going to happen. But we don't want nobody to be neglected if they sincere. Everybody need that don't haven't seen the receipts and they need to go talk to Chief Warhorse and see the receipts so that you can know we was already here. This all started in 1492 invasion. This is a 500 year protracted struggle, an ongoing war 
that's taken many facets over the years. But the voodoo part is why I'm here. Because I have to, to make these people undo these spells. And the key spell was the amnesia spell of Kingu to spell asleep. That's some dirty shit. But they had to level the playing field. Right? So I come up with the same amnesia as everybody else. But the funny part about it is I can't not know who I am because I am who I am. I know who I am, always have, but I didn't understand how you people perceived who I am as I am. So now that all of the chiefs know who's where, because we got a whole bunch of chiefs about to come out and speak to the public. They got to come speak because the people demanded an explanation from the elders of the land, where is my shit? Right. So the public service that we need to do is urge Roland Martin to go spend some time with Chief Warhorse in order for him to find out the truth of what's taking place on the land and to know that if you're going to be over here, you're either going to be with us or against us. And if you're against us, you're going to get treated like the enemy. But if you're with us and your heart's sincere, we're going to embrace you and we're going to continue to move forward with progress without distinction, without, as my mama say, being respected as a person. No big eyes, no little U's as it is in my growth and development literature. Everybody got the same opportunity as one of the clans on the land to participate in the recovery of the land. Everybody, all we had to do now was say enough is enough by making these people answer to us instead of bowing down and answering to them when they on our shit. They in our house, right? So if they misleading our leadership, what's that going to do to the people, right? And we don't. They don't want me to go ham on nobody, cussing folks out, because she made it clear that she didn't want me to do that. She wanted me to let them know the truth is the truth. And we here recovering the land from the invasion of the foreigners, and they use the confusion of identity as part of the reinforcement of the amnesia. We know who he is now. It's not working no more. So, um, wherever y'all see him at on the platform, respectfully ask him to go look at the receipts. Chief Warhorse got the whole trail of tears um, minutes, the logs, they tell you when they switched us out, who went to the uh, reservations, who got kicked out and reclassified on paper. She have all of the paperwork. And if you don't understand that, that's, that'll confuse you. So we want, we just want them to look at the receipt. If you still think you African American after that, the remedy is this. Just step aside while the organic clans claim they shit. And we're going to find out where you belong in Africa in case you want to go back home. But while these organic motherfuckers over here, the chiefs of the land, is calling Big Mama to get the final instructions to switch this shit over to us. Right? While we doing our work, the ones out there in front of our people, like Roland Martin, may not have the opportunity to be presented with the receipts. So they need to go where the receipts are at and do they due diligence on the land. <clears throat> now, I want to treat everybody like the enemy that, that's using the misinformation, the black shit. If you don't know that the, what the black is, Black Panthers, the Black Gorilla family, 
the Black Eagle Clan, the Black Hawk Clan, the Black Buffalo Clan, the Black Bear Clan. If you don't know what the fuck them is, then stop saying you black. Because we the ones that they said was dead because we the ones had to fight these motherfuckers. The rest of you motherfuckers is just in the way. So when they telling y'all the wrong information, we trying to get the right information to the people. And this African-American thing is not going to cut it any longer. Kwanzaa is not an African holiday. Ryan Karinga made Kwanzaa up. Do the study on his ratchet ass. Right? So we embrace Kwanzaa because even though the guy that came up with it was a piece of crap, he was one of us. He was our piece of crap. We didn't expect him to be squeaky clean because we knew he was a piece of shit when he wrote Kwanzaa. That's why we accepted him because we already knew what he was. He was a slime ball doing the best he can to exploit the people by giving them, gathering up a few facts of ours and giving them back to us. Dr. Clark and Dr. Bean told y'all he was a piece of shit and had no respect for the ancestors. Right? But ain't nobody getting out of here without paying for their dirt. That's the that's the that's the really shit. So the same way that they laughed at us when we was down, we laughing at they ass as we stand back up. It's not personal. Though we could take it personal. It's just family business. You're not going to come over here. We got all of these clans coming to here to ask the big chief where, why Big Mama not in charge of Big Mama shit. I got to answer that shit. They look like us, but they ain't us. They tricked Big Mama, some of them married her, and then gave their shit to some motherfuckers that didn't have anything to do with us. They made agreements as if they was us with motherfuckers that they put in to replace us to make it look like we signed all of these treaties. They brought them motherfuckers with them that signed them treaties. That was those people that they kept hostage. You got to know who they was warring with for the whole time they was over there. This is why you have to know military history. You have to know world history from both sides of the water. The history of the world, according to Oxford University, does not read the same as history of the world, according to Yale or Duke. Right? It's a whole different history of the world. Georgetown history of the war from Georgetown University doesn't read like uh, the one from Oxford University or Notre Dame University. Right? And this is how they, this is, this is where you get your understanding that the world history being written by the victors is going to make the people least resistant to the power that pretend to be. But they ain't the real power. We are. Right? So, you see Ice Cube going around doing a campaign, but he ain't calling the gatekeepers by name. That's fishy to me. Cube, what you doing, buddy? You ain't gonna just keep saying gatekeeper. Call Jimmy Iovine motherfucking name. Call Oprah by her motherfucking name. Call uh Clive Davis by his motherfucking name. You ain't got a duck from them motherfuckers. Say they motherfucking name. We finna take this shit back. Next motherfucker time, Q. Tell him easy told you to say all them bitches' names. Tell him how how in the early days. 
you ain't even know that the Jewish Defense League owned Jerry Heller. Y'all ain't even know that. That's why they was leaning on easy with them thugs. That's what made Tukey send them towers to him for security. Right? We know what's up. So he got to get Crip security. You had to go with the FOI for security. It's nothing personal. It's just a family looking out for family. It is what it is. Shit is over with. All of them motherfucking, as a young girl to call him, what he call him, killer clowns, they all done. We cried then. It's our turn to smile in the sun. Trump didn't already announce the party. We know that's going down. They didn't already announce the dead celebrity concert on the 11th of November. So we already know somebody finna be revealed. We know something big finna happen. They already said that all of the banks is ready for this new currency switch and that it was going to somehow benefit all of the people. Remember, I told y'all, the national debit debt becomes the national debit. Everything they stole from y'all, that shit got to be reversed. That's called a turnaround. See this? Silver certificate. Five dollar bill. My little brother was showing it to me today, and I wanted wanted to show y'all. Before they had Federal Reserve notes, this is a 1934 silver certificate five dollar bill. This used to be five dollars worth of silver, literally, and then they tricked us. They tricked our elders, our ancestors who didn't know no better because none of them didn't understand the mechanics of fractional reserve banking and the, uh, the inflated debt scenario. By inflating the debt, you can increase the amount that you are allowed to borrow. But who in the fuck is you borrowing money from? Then you find out that somebody overseas Hold the purse strings, World Bank International Monetary Fund. So all of the money they collecting in taxes is being sent in batch rolls to the World Bank and International Monetary Funds as payment on a debt. But the debt ain't going nowhere. So it got to be a secondary debt somewhere. Something that they paying on that they keeping a secret. Right? Those are what they call international exchange instruments that they keep in a secret, right? That's what they really trying to trade in. This is what you call a FC number in the courts, a federal count number. And the batch rolls includes all the rest our captures at war, right? We under admiralty salvage, right? They salvaging our ass. We the ones that we've been, been been trying to figure out why these motherfuckers doing what they doing because we've been at perpetual war and they are occupying force. So if y'all remember when the Bushes made their coup attempt in the Middle East by ousting Saddam Hussein and seizing Iraq, uh, Afghanistan right, and Iraq, what did they do? They gave all of the co contracts to rebuild Afghanistan and to rebuild Iraq to a company called Halliburton. And Dick Cheney was a board member of Halliburton, the vice president. Not only that, they gave uh, all of the pipeline contracts to run and reroute pipelines and rebuild and restore pipelines also to Halliburton. So now they got the contract to rebuild infrastructure of two countries, Iraq and Afghanistan. They get the contracts to, um, to uh, route the oil uh, pipelines 
and to cap the well, the oil wells that were spewing oil up into the sky. You know, people, we didn't remember this until I bring it up, and then the elders be like, "He sure do remember that. Sure did happen." And then they could tell y'all, Muhammad Karzai was selected by the CIA to replace or to become the head of the government, the interim government in Afghanistan. This is exactly how the United States Corporation was those three corporations merged together to form a super corporation to administer an interim government called the United States. So the Virginia Trading Company and the Northwest Trading Company, they merged together and then they signed something called a Treaty of Peace and Friendship, a peace document because they was always at odds with the Royal Moroccan Company. The Royal Moroccan Company became known in the history books as simply Morocco. But the Royal Moroccan Company is who Tipper Tib, the largest slave trader in, in African history, worked for. They was all what you call Ottomans, um, Bedouin Arabs that came out of the Middle East and, no, and they are nomads. They don't, this is why in the scriptures it tell you that they didn't have a homeland because they wasn't native to nowhere on the planet, right? If you're not native to the planet, you artificial. What Bobby Hemmett called them, human artificial. He said they came in at the beginning because we've been fighting the artificials ever since we've been here. Then when you fast forward up to the day, and you realize we in the middle of a conjure war, and the conjure war was was the only work if they can keep us in a state of ignorance. And that's what the Masonic lies say, fiat lux, let there be light, let my brother see as I see, because I am my brother's keeper, right? So this why we not going hard on Roland, because we believe he's sincere. We just believe he haven't seen the receipts and he's been lied to. And that if he go talk to the chief, that's the authorized war chief of the land. He can get to see those receipts that we have. Right. One of the chiefs have in their possession with his own. I'm talking about historical documents that's been in her family. He can see him and touch him with his own eyes and hands and know this is a real, actual document, a real government document, right? So that's why we want to convince him to go and look at her receipts. Because when he come back, he can tell the unapologetically African motherfucker, it's your turn now. She right. But you need to see it for yourself so that when you change your mind you don't have to feel bad that you was lied to you can just come to the realization of the truth because even though you unapologetically african <laughs> and you a descendant of frederick douglas who was native and you say you were descendant of nat turner they listed him as a native too so you don't even know who you is in truth or Maybe we not pretending. <clears throat> maybe we know what we're talking about. And maybe we've been here so long, wasn't no here before we came because we had to build this motherfucker from the ground up. See, <laughs> only by knowing who the elders on the land can you send people to the right place to get the right information. <clears throat> to the right people to bring us all back together. See, they want to bring this unity. See, I'm past all that. I could just, my thing, fuck them. But the elders said, no, we had to go through a process of refining information and explaining to the ones who believe that they telling the truth. 
that's been misled through their collegiate studies because they teach this bullshit in college as the facts. But their colleges is designed to keep them in control by making our people work for them. And the only way we can get our people back is to show them the historical documents, the pictures of your uncles and your aunties and your grandparents that's on this document, right? You show This is a whole nother level of education that you can't get in no school. This is why she been doing what she doing the way she been doing it because it's like my brother in Flint. Uh, Rod been keeping his family's fight going. That's been keeping the paper trail back to the beginning. That's showing you they always been trying to wrestle us out of our own shit by making us uh, look dumb to others, but we know what the fuck we be talking about. Right? So now we ain't sharecroppers who don't know the Queen's English no more or the King's English, right? We, we not them. We not the ones that spoke those native tongues that didn't understand how to read a lie in your language. We know your language now. Some of us are like a walking dictionary can recite your words and definitions better than you can. And y'all brought them to us. You see, they wanted to make us look like idiots and thought that by keeping us uneducated, that we would never figure out that only way I'm going to get the right education is to educate myself. Because I could see all of them teachers as being misled. I'm a kid and I know that. I'm a shorty. And know that the teachers is being misled. Right? So we want to support anybody who want to support us with the right information. This is all we want. If you're going to represent us, talk to the elders that we authorized, not the ones that they told you was an elected official because that D.C. Shen shenanigans shit is over with. Take your ass up there talking about being a senator or congressman if you want to. Watch where your ass end up at. That shit is over. That's a dead entity. We killed that shit on July the 6th, 2019. Two days after the goddamn thing expired, we exercised the blood and the right to reclaim the land and we didn't get any objections because they thought it was a joke. They thought it was a joke. They thought that when we were saying it back then, it was so few of us claiming our birthright <clears throat> using our, our old methods of oral tradition, putting it in the public domain, <clears throat> allowing the people the opportunity to agree or disagree by showing them the receipts. Right? Now these clowns trying to say we still don't know what we're talking about so we want to show our people the ones from the clans that's organic to this land who we are no we don't tell them who they are they have to determine the truth of who they are on their own but they are interfering with us Reclaiming what's ours by confusing the pool as to who's speaking. Right? They us, but they speaking for other people. Right? They speaking for people that don't exist. They speaking for African Americans. They don't exist. Af people in Africa don't even call themselves African. This is what you got to understand. The people from Nigeria call themselves Nigerian, and most of them call themselves by their tribal designation. And then they uh, supplement it with what country they come from. They don't talk about they African. Unless they from South Africa, they say they Boers or they Zulu. 
But we fall for the shenanigans over here because Jesse Jackson said we was African-Americans and took a big brown paper bag full of money for teaching us to accept that as the truth. And he knew it was a lie when he told it. That's why his old crippled ass sitting in that wheelchair suffering. Because you ain't getting out of here without paying for your dirt. Just like when he was part of the Martin Luther King assassination set up and left that motherfucker with a big brown paper bag full of money. It all came out. I ain't, this ain't no shit that ain't already in the public domain. This is not even a secret. Tricked his brother to do a deal on the restaurant business with the Blackstones and then got caught with some other shit and sold his own brother out. So what the fuck you think he gonna do for us? Right? No, nah, he was actually blood. He was a sellout. He wasn't one of them. He was one of us working for them. Right? So he thought that the money would save him. What good is it doing his ass now? He even said it. It's actually a book. It's all about the money by him and his son. Right? It's actually a really good book on money matters. But the thing is, he believed that the more money he had, the more impervious he was to the wrath of God. Like God didn't see what he was doing when he was selling out um, Martin when he was making deals to mislead his people by calling us African-American, making it into a public declaration in order to murky the waters of the organic tribes that was coming back for every motherfucking thing they owe. Farrakhan warned us about him, but because he was blood tied to the land, he got to get an opportunity to bump straight. So they secured him during the presidential election. And what'd he do? Crossed them out. The same with Al Sharpton, federal informant, and Al Sampson, a federal informant. All these motherfuckers working for the government as part of their federal FBI, uh, um, what was the name of it? Uh, informant program. It was an official program. Most of the people that they hired was the preachers. The aldermans and stuff like that to work for them and to push their agendas in order to mislead the people. Right? Motherfuckers. So now this this is where we find out who with us and who against us. Anybody out there calling us African Americans that haven't been the chief war horse to look at the receipts and the track record, you know you won't be able to trust them. So now we're going to start with Roland Martin and we're going to put his ass on notice first so that he can go back and get a fair warning to the rest of them that's out there preaching this foolishness, <clears throat> trying to go along with a divide and conquer narrative that's preventing us from seizing the final grasp of power to our own shit that's already ours. And they interfering with the original people who own this shit, getting their shit back by misleading the last few people that need to be aware. Hey, wake up. We here to get your shit for you. But we can't get your shit for you unless you realize that you got some shit coming. Reparations is a distraction. I'm telling you now, the whole purpose of reparations, if you accept reparations, you forego your birthright to the land over here. So unless you know you uh, from over there in Africa, don't take no reparations. Now, I don't care if you came from Africa last week and they offer reparations. Take that shit. Get much as you can. But if you want organic to this land, it's a trap. If you try to use their system to file paperwork with their system to get outside of their system, that's a trap. 
It's designed for you to petition them to give you your freedom as opposed to you just walking off and abandoning the contract because of fraud, because they was lying the whole time. Right? So, um, where I'm going to do a Q and a, um, when I finish this, I'm going I'm to exit out of this one. And then I'm going to come back on, but I wanted to finish this public service announcement. Now, remember, this is not about uh, attacking nobody. Um, this is about educating the people with um, right knowledge. When you arm with the truth, you can defend yourself against all of the lies. But if you got one lie weaved in your truth, it's going to make your whole shit come apart. So you have to go where the information is tangible, right? Where you can see a person that's got 50 years or so in fighting for the people with the paperwork and the track record to show. And this is why I had to find Chief Warhorse, which I've been founder. And I've been showed her to my mama before she left, but Chief Warhorse didn't know it till recently. But because I had to wait until I was in the position for her to reach back and contact me so that we could have a two way communication. The same with um, the Goddess Glow Up. So I was supposed to do the video um, with the Goddess Glow Up, but Big Mamas had already told me, no, nope, you finna sit down. She need to rest. And then she called me right before it was time to go live and say, I can't do it now. I need to rest. So I was like, oh, okay. And then I kept it moving. I'm not so, only reason why I'm able to be here today is because Chief Warhorse requested because of the obstacle in front of us right now is there's still a few lingering, um, brothers that need to be brought to the self awareness and the deception. And so when she put it all together and she show you what's going on, then there's no excuse for you to tell the lies to the people. This is how you get make people expose themselves. You expose who you is by not doing everything you can to give your people the right information. The African-American thing was made up. We wasn't calling ourselves African American before motherfucker was it, 82, 83. Jesse Jackson started calling us African Americans. When we was black, we understood we was at war. When we wasn't black no more, it would confuse the war effort because all of the chiefs from those warring priest clans knew that when they was calling us black, they speaking about the protection stone, the onyx stone. But the next generation confused because of this African-American shit when Africa wasn't even called Africa before they divided it up on the Berlin Conference. You got several different renditions of pre-African maps where it, some at one point it was the Sudan all the way across that motherfucker. And then another time it was Ethiops which was all the way across it, which is a tribute to uh, Enki, the, what they, who they call Old Man Africa, if you can read about him in Isis Unveiled. But Old Man Africa was Enki, and he is the father of those giant tribes over there, the um, Dinka, the uh, Maasai Mara, those tall motherfuckers. Those are his children, the Zulu. The Zulu was what he called his courtside seed. That's why they call Zulu. Zulu means Skywalker. This The mirror clan over here, they call them Crips. But in the old culture, they was called Hopi. The Crips is the mirror, the blue clan mirror to the red clan of Shaka Zulu, the Zulu. The red mirror is called the peace stones because they the law on the land. And the mirror to Shaka Zulu is Chief Malik Angel Bay, a.k.a. Jeff Ford. 
he was the mirror to that because he was the rook of the land, the lawman. Like the, the U.S. Marshal is in his in his seat, in his place in the interim government. And the his investigative wing was supposed to have been the Justice Department. All that was usurped by the interim government that confused who we are. We know who they is, what they did, how they done it, when they done it. We got all of the receipts to prove it. We know who they switched out in the history books. We know who they lied on their skin colors and all of that. That's not a secret no more because we was able to find documentation concurrent with the times that gave us these people's actual description, birthplaces and everything. How the fuck is George Washington born in three different places? Make that shit make sense. Right? So, um, we, we not falling for the okie doke. So from here forward, wherever y'all see somebody that's trying to um, tell the people that they African-Americans or that they looking for reparations, you're not looking for reparations. You just looking to restore the land back to the clans. And we always been rich. That's nothing new. But we was in what's called a warlock. And when you locked in warfare, even especially conjure magic, it you have to do nefarious shit to get money because you're not allowed to generate money in war at the same time or you would never get out of warfare. That's to deplete your resources to the point where you can't even participate no more. Right? So, um, the Bible is a contract, people. It, it got some good information in it. It tell you it got the art of war in it. It got the art of romance in it. It's not a history book because the history not accurate. It's not to tell you who nobody is because that ain't got nothing to do with us over here. When you got to look back, they keep bringing up the fact that you got biblically named cities over here. All that shit just got named that. That's not no ancient name for none of them cities. If they anything in the Bible has nothing to do with the tribes of the Americas, all that is some family shit from the Middle East, Babylonian blood magic, Babylonian money magic, and Babylonian sex magic. It's also have the rites of passage for the Babylonian kings list offspring. Right, but it's all coded, and if you don't know the code, it's gonna mislead you and get you stuck to the right to become overly righteous where you won't be able to see the truth. And you'll be a stepping pad for a motherfucker. They can just walk over you and do whatever they want to do. Right, so that's that's no, we don't need that. So, all these people. If you want to participate and continue to do business on this land, if you want to do business on this land, you have to abide by the law of the land. We're not under admiralty jurisdiction and maritime law any longer. We're under the law of the land now. And the law of the land say that when the chief call for you, you do your due diligence to make your presence known to the presence of the chief. Because we don't be calling for motherfuckers. Because we don't want to talk to you motherfuckers no way. We just want peace. But duty overrides desire for self. You do duty bound to talk to the people on the land and make sure everybody know what we're doing over here. Don't get in our way. We don't mean you no harm, but if you get in our way, you mean us harm. Now we got to treat you like the enemy you trying to pretend to be when you really ain't the enemy. Right? So all this um biblical shit, we ain't no Hebrews. According to them, the only place we call it in the Bible was Edomites because it means ruddy red Mississippi clay dirt. That's the only thing that's similar to anything got to do with us over here. Ruddy red Mississippi clay dirt. This color. That's what it is. I, I don't know what these motherfuckers talking. 
But right, the Mississippi is the Nile. No, the Nile is the Nile. The Mississippi is the Mississippi. The only thing is that the Nile was made to mirror the Mississippi on the flip by Tahuti himself, who left from over here to go build that shit. That's all. The shit ain't isn't is. I mean, it got magical properties, but until the magic of the self is realized, you can't see the magical properties that's really attached to any of these structures. They just look like scientific and mathematical wonders. But the magical properties is what makes them hold those intellectual wonders. Right? This is nothing new. We've done this so many times that I feel like I'm a parent telling the child for the 5,000th time to wash the dishes. This going to get cleaned up. It's already getting cleaned up. Only this time we made sure that it won't be no next time. Because the script has to be rewritten in order for the next cycle to actively take off. What we collectively agree to is what's going to be the manifestation of the next reality. And as long as we keep agreeing to these people raping these babies and chopping us up and eating us like food, then we are keeping the current system by not saying that. It's called silent agreement or tacit agreement in law. The tacit agreement is just as bad as the full-fledged on here, let's get it in. Because if you're going to agree to something, you should at least agree with consent or disagree under protest. Right? So they got three different movies that sequels to one another. You got uh, Water. Right? You got uh, uh, something in the water was the first one. Uh, oh, um, dead out of nowhere or some shit like that. Or suddenly dead or something. And then you had this new one, the pedophile movie. Now, I'm just going to bring something to your attention. The tobacco companies was being sued for using um, what they call mind control tactics in their advertising. <clears throat> so as part of the settlement, they had to, now this is the tobacco company that makes and manufactures and sprays the toxic chemicals on the tobacco that's lose the lawsuit. When they lose the lawsuit, they was forced to, to do what's called a tobacco truth campaign that actually warns people about the dangers of smoking and nicotine addiction, right? They found that the more they protested, the better advertisement they got for their dollars, right? Now, Trump mentioned that movie the other day, and I was sitting here thinking, the Hollywood going on strike right before the movie drop. The whole Hollywood shut down, right? But then a pedophile, Hollywood pedophile movie dropped like two weeks later. Then Hollywood respond by banning the movie through any of its traditional Hollywood channels. And then the movie end up still coming out on the streaming network. It looked like somebody fighting a war for our attention. Using the children as bait. This is what it looked like to me, right? They using the children to, they allowing it to happen so they can make us react in a special kind of way. That's just what I see. I don't got to be right. 
but that's what I see. So I'm looking at this and I'm, I'm smelling something that ain't smelling right. Then Jamie Foxx have a stroke on the movie set. Then the movie that he had already finished before the movie he was working on just dropped. They cloned Tyrone. Looking at it, I realized it's the sequel to the Michael J. White Black Dynamite movie. They playing the same character, but you got two different actors playing the character. So that would make the character be what we would call a hood savior. One of them brothers in the hood, even though he doing the dirt, he doing the dirt, but he's still feeding feeding people that would, couldn't feed themselves. He's selling dope to the people, but he throw a party and have cookouts with free food for all the people in his neighborhood. Now, do we really, can we really look at him as a criminal or is he just using the resources available to do what he wanted to do anyway is feed the people, right? Because we barred from getting jobs because we look like thugs, right? Some of us got tattoos. Some of us got tattoos. So it make them not want to hire us. We not we only fit for fast food restaurant jobs. And how many of us will do that shit for 25 years? And the pay don't increase very much over time. And then you got some of us get lucky. We get into a good uh, factory position where we're making a decent living. And now we can function in life to some degree because we're making some kind of money. But what about the rest of us that can't get into the workforce, end up falling into the system, get out the system, and now we really ain't going to get it. What are we supposed to do? Right? We're supposed to go in there with a pistol and say, I'm sticking you up for a job. That's that's counterproductive. Right? So the way that the system is structured, you can see the fallacy in its structure. That means that it was put together to fall apart. I mean, that means that whoever put it together, yep, die sadly, sound of freedom, God's bullet, yep. So they putting all that stuff out there to elicit a reaction from us. The only reaction we got right now is if you call yourself speaking up for us and you calling us black, foundational black Americans or African Americans, if you haven't been down there to see Chief Warhorse, you need to make the arrangements. You need to go down there and see the receipts because you're in the way. You in a way, and we don't want these people that's waking up to roll over you the hard way because they are ready for the recovery. They ready for the other side of the BS. They want to see the heaven on earth return. And you have people that still actively misleading our people, right? We, we not buying it. And it, some of us born with the instructions to move the obstacle at their own ex demise without nobody giving them the order. So by giving them an opportunity to learn where the facts at, who got the proof, and go look at it themselves, that's how we know who with us and who against us. They'll weed they self out. You don't got to do nothing but hold them accountable to do their due diligence to go and look at Chief Warhorse receipts. And that's all I got to say about that. So I'm going to um, exit out here. Then um, I'm going to take a couple bites, probably about five minutes. I'm going um, to log back in for the Q&A following the public service announcement. This has been a Dale Jones, a Dale Jones war correspondence for the people, delivering the message to support the recovery program by requesting that Roland Martin, 
visit uh, Chief Warhorse, look at the receipts about who we are before he go to calling us African American and then give a report to the people what he discovered. And um, the tribes are all on the same page collectively. It's, and Ice Cube need to call them motherfucking gatekeepers by their motherfucking name, flat out. If you're going to talk about it and you're going to do the campaign, get them off your ass. Drag their motherfucking ass out in the open, Cube. You know who you fighting up against. Let the people know so the people can protect you from them rotten motherfuckers. But if the people was, if you keep the people in the dark as to who you talking about by not saying them motherfuckers name, they can't really help you if something happened. Put them motherfucker name in the open. I don't give a fuck if this motherfucking uh, yo daddy nigga put that nigga name out there if he wanted them gatekeepers. Put their name in the public domain so the people know who asked to kick if something happened to Ice Cube. Flat out. Go ask the minister. He's going to tell you the same thing. Tony Muhammad, he's going to tell you the same thing. Put their name out there. That's your security blanket, nigga. They going to have to, now they going to have to argue with what you saying, but you already know you right, so ain't nothing they can argue with. Put their motherfucking name in the open. Let the people know who these rotten bastards is. I wouldn't give a fuck who it is. It can be Puffy, Jay-Z. It can be any of them motherfuckers. It can be Quincy Jones. Um, It can be motherfucking Barry, Barry White. It can be any motherfucker you name that's the gatekeepers. I don't give a fuck. Drag they ass out. That's the only way you're going to get protection from the motherfuckers or they going to send the JDL on that bullshit again. And remember, they got all of the CIA resources to assassinate motherfuckers. Make sure that the people know you're not suicidal because you don't want to play by their rules. Fuck that shit. Name them motherfuckers. I ain't scared of them motherfuckers. Fuck them. I don't give a fuck which one of them it is. He might not even be talking about the same ones I'm talking about. But goddamn, put their name out there to make them motherfuckers own up to their dirt. Ain't nobody getting out of here without paying for their dirt. Once you put them out there, we know who they is. Clyde Bitch Ass Davis. Jimmy Iveen. We know who them motherfuckers is. Right? So, um, I'm gonna log out here. Then I'm gonna um, come back in with the Q&A. I don't care what y'all wanna know. Just ask the question and i tell you the truth as best I know it. Right? So, peace to the people. Much love to Chief Warhorse and the elders who sent me. Hopefully, I did a good job of not um, being belligerent. <laughs> and with that, I'm gonna say peace up, feathers up. The rise of Turtle Island, the return of the ancient ones.